All right, let, let's just use the existing dog code. So uh, I'm going to come over here. We're going to talk a little bit about static variables today, static variables. And the next time I see you, which will be on Friday, we'll talk about static methods. Let's look at this dog code right here. And let's just say that somewhere in this code, we were doing some sort of calculation or whatever, and we needed the mathematical constant pi. Now, why would a dog class would need pi? I'm not exactly sure, but let's just pretend that it did. So let's say I was to create a variable called pi here. Uh, let's go uh, private uh, double. Uh, I'm going to call it final because it's a constant, right? We talked about how to make constants before. And I called it pi like this. And I set it to 3.1416 or something like that. Okay, so I could do that. And, uh, you know, now I can use it inside my code here. For example, if I wanted to print the value, I could go like this. Something like that, right? You can see this is all going to compile. Not that. Okay, I got a question for you. <clears throat> when I create, let's say I create three dogs in the test code, like Luna, Tuna, and Buna. I got three dogs, okay? Do they each have their own name, their own age, and their own weight? What do you think here? Mr. Owen, what do you think? They do. So in memory, Matt, picture memory, right? There's a, there's a piece of memory that has Luna's information in it. There's a piece of me memory that has Tuna's information in it. And there's a piece of memory that has Buna's information in. They all have separate variables for name, age, and weight. And the reason we want them all separate is that if we change one dog's name, we don't want the other dog's name to change. So it makes sense that these variables are also not only called attributes, properties of the class attributes, they're also called instance variables because each instance of a dog has its own copy of the variable. That makes sense, right? Question. Do you think that every dog needs its own private copy of pi? What do you think, Miss Nuha? Okay, tell me why. You're right, tell me why. It's a constant, therefore, would you agree that they can all share this constant? Does that make sense? They can share it, right? Okay, uh, the other thing is that these variables, you notice we make them private. And the reason we make them private is we don't want other classes to come in here and manipulate our, our personal data. So we make it private. Do I have to be concerned about somebody coming in or another class coming in and making this variable or changing it? Do I have to worry about anybody changing it? Mr. Uh, Baker, do you think we have to worry about anyone changing this? Why not, sir? So it's because it's final. It's a constant. If I try to change it, even if I try to change it in my own code, look. If I try to change it like this, look what's going to happen. You can see it says you're not allowed to change it because it's a constant. Do that. So I don't have to worry about changing it. And as long as it's not a secret, if I want to, I can even do this. It's not a big deal because I don't have to worry about protecting that variable anymore because it's a constant. But th that's actually not the point of my lesson today. The point of my lesson today is that this variable, which is really a constant, can be shared by all the different instances of dogs. If I have five different dogs, they can share this value of pi. And so to do that, I use this keyword called static. Now, it's important you understand what this means. These are attributes of the class. Every time I create a new dog, I create another copy of these things. So if I create three different dogs, they will each have their own name variable, age variable, and weight variable. But because I marked this static, there will only be one copy of pi. That means that all the dogs are sharing the, 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 the variable. Now, you notice that down here, I use it just like any other variable. See that? I can just access it right here. So look over here now. You can see it compiles fine, and I can print it or do whatever I want. So now I'm going to show you another property of static variables. Here's the way to think of a static variable. A static variable is not owned by an individual dog. It's owned by the class dog. The class owns the variable instead of an individual instance of a class owning it. What does that mean? Let's look at it from a point of view of the test code. So I'm going to now leave it like this. It's going to say public static final double pi. Okay. 
And what I want to do now is in the test code, I want to print this variable. I want to print the value of it. So let's go over to the test code. Here's the test code. And right up here at the very beginning, I want to print that value. So I'm going to go system out println. And I'm going to first try putting in pi like this. Now notice what happens when I go to compile. You can see there's an error. Try to discuss with your partner what the error is and what the test code is complaining about. Ms. Mullen, any idea why this is not compiling? Let's put a, uh, our cursor on the pi variable and see if we can get a hint from the compiler. It says, hey, I don't know anything about a pi variable. Why do you think it's saying that? Look, I got it right here. Look, see, I, it's right here. See, there you go. There it is right there. It's in a separate class. So you can see here I'm in the dog tester class, and the pi variable is declared in the dog class, and the dog tester class doesn't know about the stuff that's in the dog class. So now I need to tell this class that this pi variable belongs to the dog class. How am I going to do that? I need to put something in front of this pi. I need to put dog in front of it like that. And that basically tells it that this variable, this variable belongs to this class. So I'm going to compile and run this now. You notice that it said, nope, not a problem. Question, if I had put private here, would I still be able to access the variable from this other class? What do you think? That is correct. I would not. You can see that over here it says, hey, you can't touch that. That's private. But if it's public, if it happens to be static, I can tell it using this prefix that I can access that variable now. So I'm going to compile it and run it now, this test code. And you can see that right up here, the very first thing that I did was I printed the variable. Now I'm going to show you one other weird thing in Java. I can access the variable like this. I can also access the variable like this. Let me show you. I can go dog. Uh, e equals new dog, and then I can say system out println e dot pi. Now let me uh, run this for you. This is when I access it using the dog prefix, and this is when I access accessed it using the e prefix. So therefore, we can say that when we have a static variable, not only does the entire class own the variable but each individual dog thinks it owns it also. Okay, you see that? You can access it either way. You can access it the same way that you access your other uh, state variables, your other instance variables, or you can access it using a class prefix, saying the entire class owns it. This is one of the main uses for the keyword static in front of a variable. You can use it to create a single copy that can be shared by all the elements of the class. Now I'm going to show you another example of why we need static variables. Let's say that the town came along and told you that they want every dog to have its own unique license number. So if there are 30 dogs in the city of Stanford, they want each dog to have a separate license number. Maybe the first dog has license number one and the next dog has license number two, and the last dog has license number 30. They want to give each dog a unique license number. Let's see how we would do that. Let's say I create another property here of the dog, and let's say further that in the constructor for dog, so here is the dog constructor, and here's the dog constructor. Let's say that I did, let's say I incremented the uh, my license, number like this and i'm going to have to do it in both uh constructors because i don't know which one's going to get called so let's say i did that now my question for you is this if i create five different dogs and i print their license numbers will they each be unique now i should also create a getter for the license number so let me do that right here i'm going to say public int get license number and in here, I'm going to return my license number like that. So my question is now, so I've created this variable. I've created a method so I can access the variable from outside the class. 
And what I've done here is I have incremented the license number in an attempt to give each dog a unique license number. Now, here's my question. Let's say I'm in the test code. I'm going to turn off this test code that's right here right now because uh, this is not what I'm really demonstrating. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create three different dogs. And so now my question is, if I print the if I print the license numbers for these dogs, what are the license numbers going to be? Let's try. okay. So before I run this, I would like you to just chat with the person next to you. Is each dog going to get a unique license number? That's my question. So once again, to show you, I created an instance variable up here. Uh, I incremented the variable in the constructor. And now what I want to know is what are going to be the license numbers for each dog? Mr. Mitty, sir, what do you think are, are we're going to end up with as the license numbers for these dogs? Will it end up being one, two, and three here, sir? No is correct. So what will the license numbers be for the dogs? Can you tell me? It'll just be one for all the dogs. Very good, Mr. Mitty. You can see that the license numbers are the same. Why is that happening? Okay, very good. So each dog, when I do this, starts with a license number of zero, and each dog has its own separate copy of the variable, right? And so when I increment it here in the constructor, as Alana just pointed out, all the zeros turn into ones. But they're three separate ones. Do we want three separate ones? I don't think we do. So what we need to do, and I hope this is clear, is we need to find some way to coordinate the license numbers between all the dogs. We need to do that, right? We need some kind of shared resource, which basically says, OK, you get number one, you get number two, you get number three, like that. So here's my assignment for you. I want you to find a partner, push your desks together, and I want you to change the code so that each dog will get its own license number. And I'm going to give you a hint. You're going to need to create two variables. One is going to be static, and then one is going to be a regular instance variable or, or state variable, what we call an attribute, OK? And I want you to coordinate between those two variables so that each dog will end up with its own unique license number. So I'm going to give you some hints now in case you're struggling. What we need is a static variable that is basically shared by all the dogs. And what we need is an instance variable that's going to track the license number for each individual dog. And when the dog is born, you need to take the static variable and have it give you a unique number. And then you need to save that unique number in your, in your dog's uh, private uh, license number variable. Okay, that's what you need to do. By you can coordinate with all the dogs by using the static variable. Since there's only one of them, each time you increment it, you'll get a unique number. Okay, so try and figure out how to do that now. Uh, either one you want. Let's 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 all agree that the first license number should be a one. Let's just agree. So you need two variables here, sir. One that has like the city license numbers that will be each one for each dog, and then it has to, each dog has to when it gets issued its license number, it has to keep it in a in its own variable so that it can, you know, uh, be used later by the dog. So you need two variables here. Okay, I'm going to ask Mr. Gabriel, sir, uh, what were the two variable names you used? Did you leave this one as my license number? Okay, and sir, what was the other variable name that you chose to use? License holder, okay. And may I ask, sir, what was the uh, declaration you made for that variable? Did you say void or int, sir? Int, okay. And what'd you call it again? License holder. And did you put anything on the right hand side of this? Okay. So, um, okay. And then what did you do in the constructors for the dog, sir? Okay. So it's like this. I can write this more simply just by going like this. So I don't need to do that. Okay. Now, if I do this, what will the first dog's license number be? So uh, now if we use this technique, we basically have it. The only issue is the first dog is going to get what license number? 
Here, let me run it for you so you can see. You can see these are the license numbers that have been handed out. We're very close. We just want to start the license numbering at one. So my question is, how can I just slightly modify what Gabe has given us so that uh, the license numbers will come out to start at one? Okay, I could just swap these. And I need to put this here also, by the way. I forgot to do that. Okay, and now the license numbers will start at one. Because you can see I'm going to increment it before I issue the first one. And so let me run this again for you. And you can see now I'm issuing license numbers that start at one. Now, I want to talk a little bit about this line right here. Did I initialize this variable explicitly? Can I set it to a value? I did not. What do you think was assigned a value by the compiler? What value do you think was assigned, Ms. Nuha? It was assigned to zero. Let's say I want to start the license numbers at 1,000. OK, I want to start the license numbers at 1,000. So I want to go 1,000, 1,001, 1,002, like this. I need to initialize this variable to some value. And the question now I have for you is, should I initialize it here? Or should I try to initialize it in the dog constructor? Let's try that. If I go like this, license holder equals 1,000 in the dog constructor, you can see they all come out the same. So what I need to do instead is I need to initialize this static variable right here. And what I need to do in the constructor for the dog, now I need to ask you another question. You notice that in the past, Mr. Sarkar has always said to you that these instance variables or properties, attributes, whatever you want to call them, need to be declared here and initialized where? Where do we typically initialize all these variables? In the constructor method, right? You can see that right here. See, I'm, I'm initializing them. So I have a question. How come I don't do that for this variable? This one is not an instance variable. It's a static variable. It's not owned by each individual dog. It's owned by the class. So here is one of the main differences between static variables and regular attributes of a class. Attributes should be initialized in the constructor. Static variables need to be initialized in the static area. This is the static area right here, the area that's outside of any method. So that's why I have this here and not inside the constructor. And Ilana has described an example of why we don't want to do it in the constructor. We don't want to redo and reset this for each dog. We want to just set it once when the code first starts up. So static variables need to be initialized in the static area. That's an important concept for today. That finishes up the first part of my lesson today on static variables.